Hi everyone and welcome to a pretty long video about immigration to Norway. I have a friend who's an American and she lived in Norway for quite a while and I have interviewed her so you can get a perspective on your opportunities, what you can do when you come to Norway and what your options are. Um, maybe this doesn't fit for everyone but it is one side of one story of how an immigration is happening, how, what, what you have to go through and the steps and the places you have to be and the... Yep. So I don't know that much about it so I asked my friend if she could fill us in. So this is it. Everybody say hello to Rachel. Hello everyone. So uh, Rachel can you first Tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Rachel Stover. Um, I moved to Norway in 2009 um, in April. I married my husband who's Norwegian in October of that year and I ended up staying in Norway until last October. So October of 2013. So I was there about four and a half years before I moved. So. And what are your experiences with uh, getting a job in Norway? Uh, getting a job in Norway, this is going to be a bit difficult to answer. It'll make more sense later when we talk about UDI and visas and all that. Um, it's just going to be different for everybody. Uh, I was in Norway on a um, family immigration visa, so it's not related to a job at all. Um, so I had my visa, so I was able to get a job at a cafe, a yogurt shop, um, etc. They preferred that I spoke um, a good amount of Norwegian. I didn't have to be completely fluent. I wasn't at all fluent in my first job. Um, by the time I had my job at the coffee shop uh, in Oslo West, actually, I had a really good handle on language. Again, totally not completely fluent, but my boss trusted me. Um, that I would learn more, and we had a lot of customers that were tourists being in Oslo West in the main train station, um, so English actually came in handy. Also, uh, my my boss at both jobs were sort of international. My first boss was American, my second boss was Irish, um, so they obviously spoke English um, predominantly. So it's difficult finding those people if you don't speak fluent Norwegian, but they are there. Um, there's many people I know that uh, own cafes or bars that maybe aren't Norwegian or are half Norwegian, half American, that really like to have people with a really good grasp on English. Um, there's also jobs in the summer for um, tour guides. I know people have gotten hired at places like um, Hard Rock Cafe or TGI Fridays simply because they are American brands. What are your experiences with trying to go to school in Norway? School uh, is a little bit easier to sort of get into in Norway. Again, I was not on a student visa. Um, we'll get into that later. Uh, I was on a family immigration visa, so I already had my sort of green card for Norway. Um, I found a school that was in my interests, which was theater. Um, that was taught all in English for the most part. <laughs> so I was really, really lucky to find that. Um, basically, I applied to the school. Uh, they knew my situation, that I was American. Um, the school was Lonokosa approved, which is like it's approved for student loans. You can apply for student loans to go to the school. Um, there's tons of programs at uni that are for exchange students um, that are taught in English. Um, Especially like if you have Norwegian heritage, that would probably be really interesting. I'm sure they have classes on that. I can't promise anything because I haven't checked it out in like years. But when I was looking for school, that was one of the things I was looking at was at the University of Oslo, what programs they had. And I remember specifically they did have programs in English. Um, so I found this school uh, that was in English for theater. And I applied, I auditioned, I was accepted into the program. And then I applied to Lomakosa, which was the easiest thing ever. Uh, it took no hassle at all. I was approved easily. Um, by that time, I did have my personal number, which we'll get into later. Can you tell us a little bit about UDI and what you had to go through with them 
UDI is the Norwegian Directorate of Immigrants. So this is where you have to do all the legal stuff with the visas and permits and all kinds of stuff. Rachel, tell us about what you had to go through with them. So UDI, like Karin said, is uh, the sort of center that everybody has to go through for immigration. What, whatever visa you're on, you're going to have to deal with them at some point. I could probably talk for a really long time about UDI. I'll try to keep it short. Um, I've had tons of different experiences with UDI, good and bad. Um, the thing I have found, which is sort of like a disclaimer for this whole video, is that every time I've been there, someone has told me something different. It's always been one person says one thing, the website says another, another person says another thing. It's kind of a mess. Um, it's, yeah, to say it sort of lightly. Uh, when I went to UDI the first time, I did not have a job, I was not married yet, and I um, did, wasn't going to school, so I had no visa. And um, the woman that I spoke to was uh, basically told me, you have to leave the country, um, you're not under a visa. She gave me, basically, we'll get into more of this, I know this is a recurring theme in the video that we're going to talk about later, but we will. Um, she basically told me that I had no other option except for to do this one thing. Um, she told me it would take X amount of time to do. L later on, maybe a week later, I spoke to someone on the phone who told me a completely different story that changed my plans 180 degrees. It was ridiculous. So UDI, I, I haven't dealt with in a while. Uh, I know that like it's been kind of controversial. I know that they've... Um, not accepted a lot of people's visas from America or from uh, the UK, which has caused a lot of controversy that have families in Norway. Um, so, but you're going to have to deal with them. So, good luck. Can you tell us a little bit about how the process of getting a Norwegian ID number was? Getting a Norwegian ID number or personal number um, was very easy. After you get your visa, all you have to do is fill out a form, send it in, and within like two, I think it was two or three weeks, I had my personal number, um, which means I could go set up a bank account, have ID, um, taxes, loan casa, like we talked about, student loans, all of that stuff, particularly pertaining to money, um, was, yeah, it's like a social security number in America. Um, so, yeah, that's, it was pretty simple actually. That part was pretty painless. And uh, what about uh, the, the process of getting married and being allowed to stay uh, in Norway and uh, a little bit about having to be in the United States because you weren't allowed to be here and all that, to, all that, that story. That would be nice. So this is basically the part of the video that the whole thing has been leading up to, um, where I'll go into detail uh, about my experience and sort of the rules I was told when I was getting my visa. Um, again, I don't work at UDI. I have a very sort of specific situation, um, so it could be totally different for anybody. Uh, I'll just share my story. I moved to Oslo uh, without a plan. That is one thing I would not recommend doing. I recommend you watch this video and go to UDI's website and read up on your specific situation. I had no plan. I had no idea any of the sort of legal stuff to do with this. I knew with the Schengen Treaty that you can only be in Scandinavia for three months and then you'll have to leave for three months. And then you can come back for three months and you have to leave. It's like 90 days in or whatever, 90 days out. So that's all I knew. So the three months was slowly approaching on my time and I knew that I didn't want to leave Norway. I wanted to stay. So I went to UDI, to the office in Oslo, and I told the woman my situation and she basically said, since I didn't have a job, since I wasn't going to school, I was totally out of luck. Um, I had to leave the country. I asked her if it was possible for me to, to get a job before the three months was up if I could apply for a visa. She informed me that the only way that would happen was if it was sort of a trade job. So if I was like a doctor, a nurse, a scientist, scientist, if I was a scientist, if I, you know, any sort of specialty trade or that company that I worked for was willing to sort of sponsor me. So any big company 
uh, Finn.no. I know Opera has offices in Oslo and they're sort of international. They do a lot of visas for their workers, stuff like that. But basically, no, I couldn't go into a coffee shop, get a job and get a visa. They don't care. They don't need any more baristas in Oslo. They don't need any more waitresses. Um, so it would have to be something that was more of a career than a job, if that makes sense, which I didn't have. Um, so she basically told me the only thing we could do was to get a, a fiancé visa, which meant my boyfriend would propose to me. I would still leave Norway. This is what she told me and what we later found out to be totally not true. She told me we would get engaged, we would apply for this fiancé visa, I would go to America. Within two weeks, she said, I would have a decision on my fiancé visa and then say it was approved we would have six months from that date that it was approved to actually get married. So I would come back to Norway, we would get married, and then we would apply for the family immigration visa. Here's what happened. We got engaged, I went back to America, and um, I spoke to the Norwegian embassy, and I think it was California or Washington. Um, they told me, oh, no, it's definitely not going to be approved in two weeks. It takes up to six months. And in that time, you cannot come back into Norway. So even if the three-month thing has passed that I talked about earlier, you can't. If the visa application is still being processed, you cannot enter back into Norway, which is basically like I could not see my husband for six months, or my fiancé, sorry, for six months, and just sort of hope for the best that it was approved. That didn't work for me. I was, um, my... The husband and I had had a long-distance relationship for a long time before that, and I wasn't willing to do it again. Here's what happened. He called that same consulate and basically yelled at them in Norwegian, which I find very effective. If you can do that, always do that. No, I'm just kidding, but it actually worked really well. Um, he called them and was like, this isn't going to work. I'm not going to do it. We were told something completely different, and also, this is not fair. My fiance is in the States. I'm in Norway. Whatever. Finally, they broke down and they were like, okay, this is what you can do. This is probably, like, super secret, uh... I don't know. I did it. Whatever. She was like, you can go to America, marry her, and bring her back to Norway, and they can't do anything because you're married. You can apply for the family immigration visa immediately. You're married. Whatever. Um, so he came to America. We got married like two months later, and I came back to, to Norway and applied for the family immigration visa, which was approved. So a couple other things I'd like to touch on or just kind of share. Um, the types of visa I'm, visas I'm familiar with are family immigration, which I had, um, that lasted, sorry, that lasted a year, and every year I had to renew with a fee of, I believe it was 3,000 kroner for the first time I applied, and 1,000 kroner for every time after that. The application included stuff like proof of our marriage, wedding certificate, proof of identity, birth certificate, social security cards, um, sort of proof of your relationship if you're you know, if you haven't been dating a long time or if there's sort of an age difference. My husband and I had only technically been together for like six months when we got married and then um, we're eight years apart. So we put lots of proof that we had had a long relationship before that of a friendship, um, dating, all that stuff. Um, I don't know how strict they are. They, we were told that they could come in and interview us or interview friends and go into our home to make sure that we live together. That never happened. I don't know if I've actually heard of that happening. Um, in real life, but they do tell you that that's a possibility. Um, so basically, like, anything I could think of that would sort of prove the validity of our relationship, um, I put in. I wrote a letter, uh, pictures, all that kind of stuff that you're comfortable sharing with UDI. Um, the other thing I want to touch on is just the types of visas I'm familiar with. Like I said, family immigration, that's what I have. Student visa, where you get accepted into school and they sort of sponsor the visa for you. They'll walk, hopefully walk you through all the steps. Um, work visa, similarly, if you get a job at a Norwegian company, they will take care of most of that, as I'm aware of. You'll still have to deal with UDI in person, interview, all that stuff, um, etc. But for the most part, they take care of it. Asylum, for if you're coming from a country that is, you know, war-ridden, um, poverty, just a bad situation... Uh, asylum seekers come in Norway by the thousands. It's, well, I think it's probably the most accepting um, country of asylum seekers, I'm pretty sure. something. It's just crazy how many people they take in. Um, 
think that's actually all of them. I could be totally wrong. Student work, asylum, family immigration, that's what I'm aware of. Um, or like a tourist visa, like I said, for you could probably extend it a few months. If you're an artist, if you have a job there as like an actor or an athlete or whatever, and you only have to be there for like six months, you know, you can do that. Um, so yeah, that's sort of my story. Um, about, I think it was a year after I'd had my visa and I was uh, reapplying to get it renewed, uh, it was denied. Um, so it can happen. I called and they told me you have to leave the country in two days and we've notified the police it was insane again my husband called yelled at them in Norwegian and we fixed it um, so don't give up always depend on that try and find somebody that can do that for you um, yes so that's sort of my story um, I don't really know what else to add good luck it's a great country to live in um, there's so much to see and do there there's just no, I think no matter where you're coming from, there's going to be some kind of like cultural shock in a good way. Um, you'll just experience so many new things. Hopefully you won't have to have so much grief with UDI and you can just enjoy your time there. Um, learn the language. It's really important. Watch, I'm sure, you know, watch Karn's videos. Um, it's not that it's going to be, you're going to be lost or anything. Everyone speaks English, but it's just a really important thing. If you're going to be there for an extended time, so many job opportunities opened up for me. Um, friendships, meeting people, getting out, m like around on my own without f freaking out every time or feeling like social anxiety. It's just a big help and it's really rewarding. You'll learn a language and that's really cool. So yeah, I hope that this was informative. I hope that it helped you. Um, it's kind of a weird thing. It's a weird story with lots of problems. So like I said, I hope that it goes smoothly for everybody else. Um, and good luck and uh, thanks. Bye. Bye, Rachel, and thank you very much for contributing to this video. I could not have done this without you. I hope for all you watching this that this was helpful and that this might have given you some tips, something to prepare, some knowledge of where to get more knowledge when you come to Norway. And thanks again, Rachel. One last thing I totally forgot about, and it's a complete shameless plug of my own stuff, but I actually did a show um, about this entire experience, about sort of dating my husband long distance, dealing with UDI, all that stuff. I did a show about it. It's on my YouTube channel. Uh, I will have Karen if she obliges. Link it down and you can watch it. It's like a half an hour. Um, it just is kind of funny and like goes into the specifics of my experience that is probably less boring, hopefully, to sort of watch and listen to than me just talking about it. So, yeah, thank you again. I hope you watch that. And um, thank you, Karin, for inviting me to do this. Thanks so much. Bye.